Dr. Kimberly Mendoza, and this is another episode of Teaching Squirrels. Today, we're going to talk about generations. So this will involve everybody, and hopefully you'll get some fun information about yourself in there. Why talk about generations? That's one of those questions that some people might wonder, other than maybe it's interesting. I don't know. Um, but my entire uh when I was doing my study for my dissertation, I was studying generational theory. And let me just read it to you so that I get it right. Generational theory is, we are shaped by the events and the trends of the era we are programmed in. The headlines and the heroes, the music and the mood, the newest technology, the prevailing parenting styles. Because generations are shaped in a place in history, they tend to develop a set of defining characteristics. So that is a theory, as like every other theory. Um, it's something that something is based on, but not necessarily 100% um, you know, proven. However, we do notice that we, didn't, we do tend to take on certain characteristics of our generation. Now, there are people that are what I call border years, where they're between one and the other, and sometimes they'll take on characteristics of each of those. Their parents may be older, so they're being raised by an older generation, and so that's possibly going to affect um, how, how they are. Um, it's possible that their friends or their siblings are older. So, I mean, they, it's just like any other theory. There are um, elements to it that won't be precise or specific, but just like any other theory, there are elements of it that are true or it wouldn't exist, right? So all of this is based on generational theory. And so the idea is that depending on when you were born, uh, who you hung out with, what kind of music was happening at the time, what was happening in politics, what kind of parenting styles were happening, uh, you know, those kind of things all affect your personality and how you process and think and, and all of that. And I know... Um, a lot of people have really struggled with trying to understand the generations under them. I am an ex-gen and the boomers did not understand us back when we were teenagers. And, you know, and then we get the you get the millennials and they process even different. And then now we have the post millennials and they're even more different. And so it's just like a constant thing that happens over time. And so that's what we're going to kind of look at. So I'm going to give you uh, what those are. So baby boomers are uh, 1940 to 1965. Now they are split into two categories. Um, the 1940s baby boomers tend to um, be one way, whereas the 50 to 65 tend to be another way. And you'll kind of find that in all the generations, as I mentioned in the last video, um, you know, it, it, the generations are just so big. They're 15 years. Of course, there's going to be some differences. And especially nowadays with things going the way they're going, I mean, things are going to be separating out really quickly. Uh, the next one is X-Gen, 1965 to 1979. Y-Gen was 1980 to uh, 1994. And that would be your millennials. Uh, Z-Gen is 1995 to 2009, and that is your post-millennials. And then now we have the alpha generation who was born in 2010, goes to 2025. We're almost to another generation, if you can believe that. Um, so those are the generations. And so the different things that happen during your generations, whether it was a big event, music, politics, parents, whatever, um, they apparently like, you know, affect us in one way or another. Now, um, I'm showing a picture of my family just to kind of show you what I am involved in. <laughs> my husband is a baby boomer. Uh, I am an ex-gen. And then my oldest son, he's a border year. He is millennial, post-millennial. Um, I would say sometimes he takes on millennial characteristics more than the post-millennials, but he is both. Um, and then my younger son is textbook Gen Z and so post-millennial. So it's interesting that my family dynamics, we experience both. Now, I would say part of that is the parenting style of my baby boomer husband is in there and I'm an ex -genner and a lot of... so. If you look at the way that the, it goes, um, the baby boomers raised the millennials, the X gen raised the post millennials in the normal category. And so that kind of shows a little bit of why they may act the way they act. Um, you know, a lot of the baby, uh, the younger baby boomers, not the older ones, but the younger baby boomers was the chip that was the, um, sorry, the hippie generation. And so if you think about it, um, if you look at the attitude or, or the way that the the millennials process, it makes sense to have parents who were hippies who were kind of like, 
you know, we'll get there when we get there, you know, kind of take it easy, no rush, you know. And of course, the parenting style was that Dr. Spock, you know, don't spank them, let them do what they, you know, feel like doing. I mean, all of that, it, it, it affects how somebody processes or thinks or moves in the world. And so, you know, you, you can't discount those things. Um, whereas X Gen was the latchkey generation, they tend to be very like, let's go, let's get things done. You know, they did a lot of things on their own, and so you see a lot of that in the post millennials. The the uh, Generation Z is a is a you know wanting to get things done, and they're the now generation, and so um, it definitely uh, you do do see that a lot um, in the different generations. Uh, the problem is. Um, and here's, here's a quote I have. I'm going to go ahead and read the quote. For the first time in history, there are four generations working side by side, and a misunderstanding among generations can have detrimental effects. And I think that's what we're finding. 78% of leaders do not feel that they um, are equipped to handle this newest generation because it is so different than them. And then 72% of employers say that they are having challenges with the various generational differences. That is why this channel completely exists. This is why I do what I do, um, because I find that every generation has a purpose. Every generation has something that they can offer. And so if we can find the positive things that come from that generation um, and learn to to navigate them rather than discount them, I think that we will have a really good society. And so that's where I come in. That's that's literally what my research is on. Another quote for you, the single biggest problem facing us today is that our digital immigrant bosses and educators who speak an outdated language are struggling to teach and reach a population that speaks an entirely new language. And this is from Herther. Um, and it's it's true, right? I mean, we there, there's a language that they speak that if you go all the way to the baby boomers, especially the 1940 baby boomers, um, who are a whole different, you know, Ball game. I mean, they're different than X Gen, let alone all the way down to the post millennials. Um, there is a language barrier. They we speak different languages. Um, so when we look at millennials, millennials were the me generation. Uh, you know, the here, let me just. I have a list for you that um, I pulled up. Boomers were self fulfillment. Millennials wanted to have fun. Uh, boomers journey potential searching. Millennials are like we're already there. Uh, boomers are like, change the world. Millennials are like, follow your dreams. Boomers were about protest. Millennials were about surfing the web. Uh, boomers were about abstraction. Millennials were about practicality. Boomers were about spirituality. Millennials were about things. Uh, boomers were about philosophy of life. And millennials were about feel good about life. Um, and so it's, it's kind of interesting when you look at them side by side of how much uh, there is a difference. Now, millennials were one third of our generation and they were the biggest generation until the post millennials. Um, there's been kind of a new baby boomer. Now, X Gen is this little teeny um, generation right in between. And the reason for that is two reasons. One, um, women started to go back to work and so they weren't having children as much. Um, we also had the um, uh, invention of birth control. And so uh, X Gen is the, oh, and divorce went up. Let's, let's not discount that either. Divorce went up. So with all of those happening, uh, X Gen is this little teeny generation squeezed between the boomers and then the millennials. And then we have the really big post millennials that are coming out of that generation uh, when family became popular again, I suppose. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's, that's kind of where we are. Uh, I wanted to give you a little bit of who uh, the boomers are because I think that's important to know too. Early boomers um, began a career as a young person, basically remained in that career until they retired. They were considered the most educated generation in American history. Um, that was way back, you know, a long time ago. Now they're actually saying that the post millennials are the most educated because they are on Google. They're learning much younger. They know a lot more, a lot sooner. Uh, so that's changed a little bit. Uh, the late boomers, those are the ones 50 to 65, they were free Woodstock generation. They avoided the rules. Uh, they're known for being laid back and cynical and big on individuality um, and not being part of the predictable. Uh, oh, and I forgot to say the early boomers were really about put career first, family second, whereas the late ba baby boomers kind of changed that around a little bit. Um, 
X-Gen, uh, they were from 65 to 80, and they were the most anti-baby generation uh, of all time. Um, they only comprise 65.2 million people in the world today. Self-driven, independent, determined, sometimes rebellious to make their own rules, and known for being collaborative, career-minded, and thinking outside the box. And so um, that is the different generations outside of the post-millennials, um, which we're going to get into Gen Z now because that's, you know, why this, uh, this whole entire thing exists. But um, I wanted to explain one more thing about the millennials. Um, this is a good explanation that I saw in uh, one of the lectures I was listening to. It said, if you were to look at the, uh, you know, like a OC episode, there's one of them that said, the father says, watch your mouth. I was trying to be polite. You should give it a try. And the kid responded, no, I'd rather be honest. And that is literally where uh, the millennial mindset is, is they want that transparency. They want that honesty. They don't necessarily give respect right away. And that is true in the post-millennial as well. You don't, when we were growing up, an adult automatically got respect. A supervisor automatically got respect. We gave them respect because they earned that respect. They've worked there long enough or they've raised us or whatever. They had the respect that they earned by what they did. Well, the new generation does not automatically give respect. Respect has to be earned. And that's really hard for us older people because we feel like our title alone should probably give us the respect that we have or should have. Um, but the post-millennial and the millennial does not see it that way. They feel like you have to earn it. So there is a, obviously an, a contention there um, because that's going to be a problem no matter what. Um, both millennials and post-millennials, they desire flexibility. Uh, they don't work. Um, they basically work to live, not live to work, which would have been how it was back in, you know, the baby boomer days or maybe even a little bit in X-Gen. Um, X-Gen is very work driven. We tend to be the first ones in and the last ones to leave. Um, and even though we're not as loyal as baby boomers, baby boomers will start in a company and stay in a company. X-Gen is more likely to move around until they feel fulfilled in a career. Um, so that's, that's a little different there. Um, but if you think about it, if you work to live, you're basically going to work just so that you can feed your family, not because you want to be there. Well, that's going to affect how you act at work, right? That's not that's not a driven to do what you're doing. And so for that reason, they're also not loyal because they'll keep moving around until they feel comfortable in wherever they're at. Um, I have another quote um, by, by Twinge. It says, they have an innate belief that they can be anything they wanna be, but suffer from low self-esteem to make it happen. Um, they believe anything is possible, and but a lot of times they struggle with self-esteem. And so we have a big hurdle to build that self-esteem um, because what I have found, at least with the post-millennials, that if you will give them a project and they feel they can do that project, they will go 100 miles down the road to make that project happen. Uh, I actually enjoy working with post millennials. I've had a hard time with a lot of millennials. Um, and that's just me personally. That doesn't mean, you know, and that's not all of them because I have a really good associate uh, at my work that is a millennial who's amazing. And so once again, it's a theory, not, it doesn't apply to everybody. So you don't want to put people in a box and assume they're a certain way. This is just a guide. So if they're acting a certain way, you can say, okay, this is what I need to work through to get to the other side. Um, so I'm going to get into um, post-millennials really quickly here. Um, understanding them, um, we kind of went through it last, you know, the last one that they have, you know, really high expectations for technology. They have that instant gratification. Um, their focus is, you know, not where we probably want it to be. Um, it's lower, significantly lower. And also, um, they think that they can multitask. Here's the thing. So when they do video games and stuff like that, they are constantly, like we said in the last video, there's task skipping. They're going from one thing to another. They're reading, they're playing, they're doing all these different things. So they 
ultimately think that they can multitask. Well, multitasking has actually been proven false. It's a, it's a falsity. You cannot actually multitask. What happens is you might be doing several different things at once, but you're not doing any of them very well. Um, in order to do something very well, you have to give all your attention to that particular thing. And so there is a misnomer that we multitask. And so this generation thinks that they can do that. And so a lot of times they will attempt that, but then what you get is subpar work. And so we have to try to encourage them to stay focused on the one thing. Um, they are very entrepreneurial. Um, and so they are starting very early. I do have a video that will come up pretty soon that I will, will give all of the different jobs and stuff that um, some of these young people have been doing. And uh, it's kind of fun to watch. Um, and so for that reason, that's that, like I was talking about in the last video, you have to get them involved. You have to get them doing something that is part of the business if you want that buy-in, if you want them to stay loyal, if you want them to stay long. Um, if you're just having them push a broom around and clean out closets, chances are they're not going to stay very long. Yeah, they'll stay as long as they have to because they are working to live. They want to pay their bills. Um, but as soon as they find something better or more enjoyable, they'll move on. Also, let me just put this out there. Um, this is something that my son really explained to me. There is a idea among the post millennials that they are going to make it on YouTube. Now I'm doing a YouTube video right now. Do I think I'm going to make it? Not necessarily. I just have this information in my head. I feel like I should share with the world. And if anybody wants to listen to it, cool. If they don't, no big deal. Um, it's fine. However, they, most of the population of um, the post-millennials believe they are going to make it on YouTube, that they're going to blow up and they're going to be sensational. And so why should I go to college? Why should I learn this? Why should I work? I'm going to be rich. I'm going to be famous. And I guess it's no different than maybe when X-Gen, you know, we thought we were going to go to Hollywood and make it rich there. I don't know. Uh, maybe the same kind of concept. But because they have this idea in their head, um, a lot of times it's hard to get them to understand that that's not really how the world works. Most people don't usually become famous and rich. It is a one-off that happens here and there. Um, I don't know. It's just something to, to work through, I suppose. Um, because they have those high expectations, they aren't necessarily loyal to a business unless that business understands how they process and think and uses them. And so loyalty, like I said, it's earned, it's not given freely. And so we have to find ways to build in that loyalty, make them part of the process, put them in your boardrooms. And let me just say, you know, today I was talking about all the, uh, I was talking about different generations, you know, the baby boomers, the millennials, the X gens, the Y gens, sorry, I said millennial and Y gens, um, Generation Z, sorry. Um, you should have each one of these sitting at your table in your boardrooms. I know I said this in the last video too, but think about this. If you're trying to reach a younger population, you're not going to do that with a bunch of old people in the room. You, you've, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm X Gen and I think I have a lot of really great ideas, but my son has often proven, mom, that would never work with my generation. We don't process that way. We don't think that way. Or he'll show me something that he thinks is hilarious. And I'm like, I don't, I don't get this meme. Let me just put one up here right now. And you tell me if this makes sense to you. <laughs> okay. So my son thinks this is super funny. I don't get it. I'm like, what? And apparently their generation likes random, right? Um, now, if you look at Etchgen, we used to think jokes that it would be completely inappropriate. Um, you know, we used to do grosser and gross jokes. I mean, those would be super inappropriate today. Or we would do things like, you know, jokes that actually would go against disabilities and, and stuff like that. They were inappropriate, would not fly in today's society. Um, so every generation has their sense of humor that may or may not make sense, you know. Um, so because we process and think differently, um, you put people in a room, you're going to have a much broader sense of the world as you're trying to market, if you're, especially if you're trying to market to younger people. Now, if your company is for 55 plus, then you should have people in your, you know, your board that are all 55 plus. But if your business is something more than that, um, 
you need to have younger people in there, especially if you're trying to reach that generation and diversity as well. You know, if you're unless you're trying to reach just one demographic, which most people don't. And and like I said last time, our generations are way more diverse than they've ever been, uh, mostly because a lot of people are cross marrying. You know, I mean, I think we'll get to a, a day and age where we won't really have maybe a bunch of races because we're all intermarrying. I'm one of them. I'm, I married a Hispanic man. And um, so for that reason, we need to bring lots of different people in, into the room, into the table, ages, you know, um, demographics, all of it should be shown in that space. And so I cannot recommend that more. If you're not doing that, uh, you are definitely missing out on some knowledge that you probably could have. Um, and then, like I said last time, they are the now generation. They want to get going. They don't want to wait. And that's hard because we're like, you have to wait. You have to wait. We waited. You need to wait. And they don't understand that at all. Um, and so if we make them wait too long, they'll move on to somebody else that'll allow them to start right away. Uh, so just keep that in mind. I think that's really important. Um, so that's just like an overview of different generations for this week. Um, and next week, let's see, what are we doing next week? Um, next week, we're going to get into how to... Um, Sorry, I'm not looking at the right page. Um, we're going to get into some of their fears and how to overcome them. And uh, just keep checking in because I've got a lot of information for you over the years that I've collected. All right. You take care. Have a great day. Bye-bye.